this is a nationwide strike, so this is right across the entire UK, all universities, um, and it's the first time we've done this, where we won the ballot across the whole sector, which is really significant, and we're out on strike uh, for two, two main reasons. First is pay. Since 2009, our pay has gone down by 25%. We're also protesting against um, cuts in our pensions. We're to lose about 30% of our pension on retirement. It's also about the, the uh, gap in pay over the question of gender, ethnicity, and disability. This makes it much more difficult for people from a working class background, people from disabled people who, or people with disabilities who um, have to pay more um, each month um, because of their disabilities. It makes it harder for women to, to remain within the academy. Um, so um, people of um, lots of different minority groups makes it so much more difficult to stay in, in the academy whenever pay is so, has decreased so much in the last Ten years. We're also on strike um, over a long-running dispute over conditions, so we want agreements on equality, on workload and casual casualisation as well. Roughly a third of um, academic staff in the UK uh, are on casual contracts, are on insecure contracts. So increasingly, funding arrangements um, favour uh, that kind of um, in insecure contract and um, therefore we have very significant levels of precarity and that, that leads to stress, that leads to um, staff feeling that they can't cope, um, that they don't know what their future is and that, that impacts students. So when we people go into to teach you, a class, the students want to know if this person is properly employed, that they're able to plan their classes, that they're able to to, um, to plan so for the next year to see continuity. Those staff need to be able to go home knowing that, they, um, that they're able to do this continually, that they're not going to be interrupted, that they're not going to be having to spend all the time looking for another job. Um, and that's the situation I'm seeing with colleagues. Um, people coming in, doing their job, doing teaching, doing research. Um, uh, making sure the students have a proper quality of education, but reciprocally, they're not getting the, the basic and, uh, things you should be able to expect, like decent working conditions, um, decent pay, continuity, and pension at the end of it. The pensions industry wants to shift towards pension schemes where all the risk is loaded onto the individual. So as a consequence, they, find, they try to find ways to explain why it is that we need to shift towards the risk being um, loaded onto individual members of staff on retirement. The latest scam that they did was to value the pension scheme in March 2020. And if you can visualise the stock market index in March 2020 when COVID-19 hit, they all plummeted. So they did a valuation then and they predicted therefore a deficit in 20 years time for our pension scheme that was astronomical and therefore they pushed through cuts in benefits and increases in, in payments. My pension for example has decreased, was cut by 39% last year just like that um, again it makes it much more difficult for people to stay in um, academia that you know don't have wealth behind them and I think that this is what we're facing into that if you look at the kind of 10 15 15 years time the diversity of higher education is really really under threat and it's going to be so uniform and so uninspiring that I really worry for our students. I also think in terms of the kind of workload that we have. The level of workload, um, particular, particular times of year, the, you know the, the data that we've seen shows us that it's leading to, to mental ill health, you know people are going off sick uh, because of the, the levels of stress that are under, you know, from the excessive workloads. We did a workload survey that indicated that a very significant proportion of our staff feel they simply cannot do their, do their job in the time allocated. Um, we have, um, there are 83 universities in the UK that have shorter working hours than, our, than at Newcastle University. And even then, many of our staff have workload allocation at over 100%. So it's a massive problem for us. And it, you know, staff, staff feel that they're at breaking point and something needs to be done about it.
neoliberal university system is damaging to all of us who are part of it. It's damaging to all of our mental health and our um, our kind of yeah, all of our well-being um, and our learning as well. Um, so yeah, everyone should be paid properly and shouldn't have to. Uh, no one should have to go to food banks or um, like be in their own draft at the end of the month. So yeah, we're standing by by university staff. Um, because while um, vice chancellors are paid hundreds of thousands of pounds, um, university staff on precarious contracts are struggling, um, and we, we support them. 50 billion is currently being hoarded by UK universities. Student fees are sky high, yet we have tiny pay rises that mean nothing in the context of inflation and the cost of living crisis. But we see none of this 50 billion. We don't see the fruits of our labour, we just get the scraps. So where's the money gone? Where's it gone? Vice Chancellor's salaries, vanity projects, and shiny buildings. Shiny things do not make it better. It's the staff, the postgrads, the postdocs, and the students that made the university, not the concrete and the glass. Question of um, the pay of senior university executive is interesting because what it indicates is the extent to which the neoliberal model has eaten into higher education as a public good. So increasingly university vice chancellors see themselves as CEOs of big corporations. Um, so for example Newcastle University the, tur the, the turnover is about, half, is about 500 million pounds. Big universities um, like Newcastle, Leeds or Oxford or Cambridge or the University of London see themselves as, as players in a global marketplace for higher education. So today I'm just supporting our friends over at UCU um, who are currently out on striking. A lot of the issues that UCU are campaigning for are similar ones that my members in Unison face um, and we just want to support their cause today. We've been trying to come along wherever we can to sort of like show visible support to um, the striking workers um, because obviously their fight is our fight as well. We want a better for, for everybody um, and you know our communities are made up of people who are in the unions as well so that's why we're here but demands for um, good decent conditions job security all of those demands need to be met because if the people that are fighting now lose um, and their conditions and their pay terms are degraded that's what the future looks like for everybody else they need to have their demands met and we will be here until they do